Happy Talking Tuesday from Bill Landis and Austin Ward. This is the Podcast Daily. And we put a little pin in it for a little while, Bill. But let's take it out. Okay. Let's talk quarterbacks. Let's do it. So we've seen barely any football, but three windows of throwing sessions for Ohio State's quarterbacks collectively. Yeah. Saw the scrimmage on Saturday, which, again, was not the full picture because they weren't uh, in pads being tackled, and they never will be because they're wearing those black non-contact jerseys. But a big part of the evaluation for Ohio State would be, I think, rushing the football. So there's just you know, a week and a half left in spring camp. Do you think we'll get any resolution? Where do you think that this battle sits right now? I don't think we'll get any resolution. Um, I didn't think that coming into the spring, or I shouldn't say that. I believe that coming into the spring, but not as strongly as I, as I do now. Um, and I think that's just a product of seeing Will Howard and Devin Brown on the field together and realizing that at the moment, it's a little closer probably than you would expect, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. Like it's a credit to Devin, I think, and also like an understanding of reality for a guy like Will, who is very experienced, but also is like learning new stuff, learning how to play with different players. And he's definitely in a better place now, I think, than he was at the beginning of spring, but still like working toward, I think, really having a, a full command of the offense and finding the level of consistency that I think he'll need to have to, to win this job. And, and I would say that Devin's looking for that consistency too, based off what we've seen and kind of what we heard. But I think because of that, unless someone just like makes like a serious push in the next two weeks, which is definitely possible, we've seen it happen here before. Um, I don't think we'll have much resolution after the spring, which I also think is totally fine, right? And you, you hope that it gets to the fall with this quarterback room looking the way it looks now, and then you have one of the more competitive situations in college football, which I think ultimately gives Ohio State the best chance of having the right guy out there and also getting to the fall with some depth. So um, I think Ryan Day will try to finesse that a little bit and, and keep it open and, and try to position the offense as, as best he can to be as, as successful as it can be next year. I, I'm suddenly more open to the idea that they can carry that into August. And perhaps on April 15th, I will be proven wildly wrong. Um, and then I'll regret that I didn't feel stick with my intuition going into spring football that Ryan Day needed to make a decision and take control of that room so that he didn't let it, it be made for him by one of those other guys electing to leave and being guaranteed a, a starting job and a guaranteed role somewhere else. Uh, I don't know. I, I think every time that we've had conversations to talk with, opportunities to talk with Devin Brown and Will Howard and Lincoln Keenholz, all three of those guys seem to buy into the idea that it doesn't have to be determined in April. And that's easy to say when you don't have to make that choice. And it's not April 15th and you're still in the middle of that battle. But I, when Devin Brown says like, I still think I believe in myself that I'm gonna be a starting quarterback at Ohio State. I don't think that he means it has to be right now. Um, now we'll see if that winds up being the case, but I do think that there is a greater possibility than I had considered a month ago that all three of those top options, and then Julian Say and Port pushing up there at number four, are more than happy to be part of this team for another year and then regroup from there. Do you feel it's at all similar, the situation with Devin, to the situation with Joe Burrow a few years ago when Joe had the opportunity to grad transfer and just had like had invested a lot into the program and was in a position where he was at best uncertain of whether or not he'd ever be the starter here? So Urban Meyer and Ryan Day like kind of had to give him the lay of the land, like not not name Dwayne the starter coming out of spring, but like you know acknowledge that Dwayne was certainly ahead and maybe that it was heading in that direction. Do you think that Ryan Day owes Devin Brown any kind of explanation along those lines to a guy who only has two years of eligibility left? Well, I think they have to, and then that that part of my mindset on this has not changed. They have to be clear about where yeah. what they think the evaluation is, and then let those guys decide. Um, you have to be honest and upfront about that. And then if Devin Brown says, yeah, I can understand where you're coming from on that, but I, I still think in August or in a year from now in March and April that this, I can still be that person and I'm willing to continue to battle over the summer uh, and take my chances in, in the final year. Like at least that part has to happen. They can't just be like, yeah, you know what? Do whatever you want. Like, yeah, you guys are right here and this is, there's no, we're not gonna explain it to you. You have to put the cards on the table, and I think we, Berm especially, has been talking about like 
Joe Burrow comparisons with Devin Brown since before he arrived. And I always try to make that point as well, that it took three plus years before Joe Burrow started fulfilling that kind of potential. Uh, it, physically, understanding the game, taking it out competitively, all that took time for him. And I think that the fourth small windows we've seen of Devin Brown have all been really good. I don't know that they're, and I'm not Ryan Day and I'm not Chip Kelly, I don't know how they could go right now and have that conversation with Will Howard or Devin Brown. Be like, this guy's definitively in the lead. Like, I don't think that that's real. And that's the difference. I thought it, at that time, even if Ohio State didn't want to name Dwayne the starter, he, he was quite clearly going to be the starter. Yeah, that's that's very different compared to the situation because I, I agree with you. I don't, and we haven't seen every practice, but we've seen and heard enough. I think that it's, I think it's pretty clear that no guy is leaps and bounds ahead or even, even a little bit ahead, right? It does feel pretty neck and neck. And also like that, the hypothetical conversation that I agree that Ohio State needs to have with Devin Brown is not to suggest that Devin will be behind yeah, <laughs> when, no. when spring ball wraps up either. He could certainly be ahead, or, or I, I would imagine they'll present it to them as their neck and neck again, unless someone really makes a push here in the last two weeks, which makes this really like it's, it's just not. And maybe it was naive to, you know, not have an open mind about it get, being at this point in, in spring or, or misguided, maybe is maybe the right term, but um, it's nonetheless surprising to me that we're beyond the halfway point of spring ball. And I don't know that I'd be surprised either way with Devin Brown or Will Howard being named the starter ultimately, you know, m months from now. Um, which, I, again, I think I think is a good thing, right? I don't I don't necessarily think that means that Ohio State is in a situation where, like, it has two, then it has none, right? It's far too early, I think, to, to talk in those terms. But um, it, is, it is odd to me, surprising to me, that... Devin Brown has like caught our attention so much in this way during during the spring, and like, I, I don't think we're being hyperbolic about it either, because I think a lot of people who have been out here watching practice have said similar things, right? So it's just a, it's an interesting spot for Ryan Day to be in, as he tries to decide who the right guy is to lead this offense. And I think some of that too, if we're talking about our own evaluations, a product of how little we've seen, and then trying to extrapolate that information along with what has been heard or talked about around the Woody. We, we were sitting out there in the lobby on Saturday after the Student Appreciation Day scrimmage, and there were other, you know, we're, we're chatting it up with several different other members of the beat, and they were like, one person's like, I think Julian Sand was the best player on the field today. Another says, well, I thought Devin had the best day amongst the quarterbacks. And uh, I didn't see separation between Will Howard or Devin Brown personally. Um, and again, this is all out. Who, who knows which rep that person saw that I didn't see or which rep I saw that yeah. they didn't. You know, I think that's, to your point, probably a positive for Ohio State that you can say all those guys did enough good things that you could build a power rankings with three or four different options because Lincoln Keenault's also made one hell of a throw during seven on seven that I was watching. So I, I don't know that there's a wrong answer currently. But again, that is based on the old world of college football that doesn't have a transfer portal on April 15th and NIL opportunities and people that are going to be flooding uh, you know, the social medias and phones and DMs of all, really, I mean, all five of those guys. Like, I think that's the part that is the toughest dynamic because if you were in the year 2015 and you had these five guys and you knew that they were going to be around in August, you'd... Ohio State would be doing backflips. Yeah. Instead, they're going to have to be on alert because there may be some element of urgency to a decision that they wouldn't traditionally have had to make. Yeah, I mean, it just could look very different. Um, not not even months from now, like three weeks from now. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it could look very different. So, I, I, and I don't know. I would I would be lying if I said like I had a vibe on exactly where that's going. I think the only thing you can do is I don't, take Devin Brown at his word, I guess, but not in a way that like. If he decides he wants the transfer that you like, you call him a liar, right? I just think like situations change and perspectives change. You don't know what opportunities might be out there. So like, I'm not, I'm not going to hold him to it, but I believe him when he says he wants to be here and that he believes that he can one day still be Ohio State starting quarterback and that he wants to embrace the challenge of ultimately like climbing that mountain. Um, and he seems better positioned to do it now. Like what happens behind him? I got, I don't know. Like, I don't think Julian Sane is going to transfer, right? Um, and I don't, I don't think either the freshman are going to leave. Like, why would they? Um, so I, I think they have a reasonably strong chance of actually keeping this room intact, um, which probably would go against conventional wisdom for a lot of people given the climate. Yeah. But I don't know. Do you disagree with that? Like I, I I'm not. It's not one hundred percent of the way there. But like when you try to game it out, it's like I can see a situation where all five of these guys are still on the roster in the fall. Yeah, I would have thought 
on March 1st that the odds of that happening were zero. And I, it would honestly be foolish, foolish for me to assign a percentage on it right now because of all the other factors. And you don't know what it might take, what someone might be willing to offer if they are desperate for Will Howard, Lincoln Keynotes, or Devin Brown at the end of spring camp. And there will be desperate teams. Like, there will yeah. be teams that, that want to do that. I, I strongly believe that all three know what the plan is currently as constructed and what those opportunities could be. Will Howard's is, is the easiest to understand out of all of them. It's cut and dried. He came here for one year specifically. Uh, some of what we've seen also is like, there've been other conversations about full contact scrimmages where like, it seems like the feedback I've received is that that's where Will Howard does maybe have a little bit of an edge over Devin Brown um, and the quarterback run game opportunities, which again, is not because Devin Brown can't do it. But I think that we've seen that, especially at Kansas State and the added years of development and yeah. physicality on that frame for Will Howard that, that may set him apart. I did, I've not seen that. I don't know that. I'm just telling you some other things that might be pointing Will Howard's way. But anyway, his situation is still one year. Devin Brown's doesn't have to be that way. Uh, when he arrived, he certainly talked openly about wanting to compete and betting on himself and going all in and burning boats and all those things. But the, op the window for him to still be the, a starting quarterback for Ohio State and what one year could propel him to would exist without winning the job. I think he uh, understands that. I, it seems like he has the patience to do that. And Lincoln Keenholz is certainly of the mindset that the Cotton Bowl experience, I think, taught him that he doesn't need to rush out into the lineup before he's ready and that this is year two and an opportunity to develop and then compete beyond that. So, And he preserved his redshirt last year, right? He still has four years yeah, left he, for this one. Yeah, he, he will be able to do that moving yeah. forward. So that's certainly all positive. And then the Cotton Bowl didn't even count towards that. Right. So, you know, I think that there is a real chance. I don't, putting a percentage on it, as I said, would be like a fool's errand because there are so many other factors to college football that yeah. we're privy to, but not fully in, involved in. Yeah, but even that it's a non-zero chance, I think is a different stance. I mean, like to your point, we would have had a month ago if somebody asked us about it. It's like, of course they're not going to keep everybody here. How could they? And and listen, maybe it'll it'll end up going that way. In and, two and, weeks. Yeah. And, it, and I honestly think if it does, it'll be less about what's going on in here and more about Team X doesn't have a starting quarterback and Ohio State has some good options and you can throw some money their way. Like, I, I don't know who... Who knows who that might be? Um, so you can't ever rule that out. But it just it does it does seem like there is a, an understanding of everybody in that room of like what the score is, and no one's going to be blindsided by whatever decisions might be made or how things ultimately shake out. And I think that's a product of like just doing the only thing you can do if you're Ryan Day and, and the staff, which is like being honest with everybody in your evaluations. And that doesn't guarantee you anything, but I do think it leaves Ohio State in a good spot. Um, I. I I th and I think like I don't know what I said at this time last year, so maybe I'll eat these words again. But I I feel I feel more confident at this point. I, I, I feel like I'm more confident at this point than I was last year that Ohio State is going to have the quarterback that it needs to achieve its goals this year. And maybe that's just because at least one of these guys in this room is super experienced mm -hmm. and Will Howard. But even like Devin Brown, like has some scars on him now, and I think he's a better player than he was a year ago. So I think they'll be okay. It's just maybe going to be more of a drawn out process than I initially anticipated. I do. I think that has to be underlined and in bold that Devin Brown is a much better player, again, from a, the small sample size that we've seen across the board, the arm strength, the, the, the confidence was always there. That's not, yeah, that that's was never, never changed, but like yeah. the physicality, the, you know, one full year of being in the program and, or one additional full year winter workouts and all those other things go a long way. And, and his, his year in development last year was complicated by the broken finger in the end of spring and the time that that set him back and then dealing with the ankle in the middle of the season, just when it's every time there seemed to be some momentum for him, that was yanked away from him. Even in the Cotton Bowl, he felt like December practices had put him in a better position to succeed. And then he's hurt by the end of the first quarter yeah. and can't continue. And said that, you know, it, it was more than just the ankle that kept him out of that game moving forward when he tried to uh, got through that. So that hasn't happened to him at this point. You know, you certainly knock on wood for that. But he's the one that is making this a real thing and not just uh, anointing Will Howard. But we'll see because there's another week and a half of evaluations to go. Yeah, and I, I very much got the impression from Ryan Day, maybe this is like extrapolating too much from a couple of sentences about Will Howard, but that Will is making progress and there's a belief by like 
come August when camp ramps up that he's going to be in a much different and better position than he is currently. Not that he's been bad to this point because I, I haven't heard anything that makes me concerned about that, but just that there's been a, a, a progression here that maybe has been, I don't know, a little more gradual than perhaps you'd expect from a guy who's played as much football as he is, but I, I think understandable. Um, but that the payoff coming down the line as he like just kind of soaks all this in and gets developed by you know, maybe the best quarterback developing program in the country, um, that he's really going to make a jump in the summer. Well, we'll see if this was misguided conversation or not, because in two weeks we'll probably have a much better yeah. picture <laughs> yeah, of, we will. of yep. what the future will look like, both because all of spring camp will be done and because the transfer portal will be open. We'll see what that means for Ohio State. Uh, we will be back in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center on Wednesday and then not again until a week from Friday ahead of the spring game. So a few more opportunities ahead of us to get a little bit of that information as the Buckeyes do too on the quarterback battle as it is ongoing at the two-thirds two point of camp. Uh, thanks for joining us on the Podcast Daily for a Tuesday talk. That's Bill Landis. I'm Austin Ward. We'll see you later.